welcome to the third Thursday class. So let's start the class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parthama, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhur Bhavaswaha, Tatsavitra Varenayam, Bargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Dio Yona Prachodaya, Astoma Sadhamya, Tamsoma Jyotirgamya, Mrityurma Amritam Gamya, O Musena Vabtu, Sena Bunatu, Saviriam Karvavai, Tejasvi Navadi, Tamastu, Mavidvi Shavahi, O Mshanti Shanti Shanti. We ended our class last week's class on verse number 14. And I told you that this mantra, mantra number 14, is also in the Kathopanishad, Munda Kupanishad. And this is like a, during the Arti also, a lot of devotees, they sing this. Okay. The sun doesn't shine there, nor does the moon, nor the stars. The lightning does not shine there, much less this fire. When he shines, everything shines after him. By his light alone, do all these shine. Okay. So this is where we ended our class. So now in verse number 15, where we are starting out, the Rishi is again asserting that there's no other way to liberation other than self-realization, personal realization. And that happens due to reflection also. So before we have the self-experience, reflection is needed. And before the reflection, the studies are needed and that's what we are doing. We are studying these deep scriptures. So let's look at verse number 15. Ekaha hansaha bhuvanasyasi madhyesa eva agni salile samnevishtaha tam eva viditva mrityum ati eti na anyapanthaha vidyate ayanaya. Eka means one hansaha, supreme self. Hansaha, bhuvanasya of the universe. Asya of this madhye in the middle. So means he ev only agni fire. Sali lay in the waters. Samnevishtaha, fully established. Second line, tam means him, ev alone, viditva, by knowing. Mrityum, death, pati etihi, goes beyond. No means not, anya other, panthaha path, vidyate, there is ayanaya for liberation. There is one supreme self in the middle of this universe. Middle means everywhere. He alone is the fire that exists in the water. Only by knowing him, Death can be overcome. There is no other way for liberation. There is an unusual phrase in this verse. God as fire in water. Agnihi salil samnevishtaha. We are familiar with the fire in the forest, which is called Davanal in Sanskrit. And the fire or the molten lava, which emerges from the depths of the ocean is called Vadvanal. So there is a fire, fire in the water. Fire element and water element have a special relationship. Usually, the subtler cannot be destroyed by the grosser. But the fire, which is the subtler element, is doused with water. We know that. 
So space accommodates a fire and air spreads it further, but water alone can put it off. We are familiar with the, the cause is always present in the effect. Subtler is in the grosser also. Fire is a subtler. Cause of the water and so is al always present in water. Same way God, the cause of all, the subtlest of all, is present in all the effects. His manifestations, gross, subtle elements and world. It also means God is present in the primordial waters as fire. The one who takes forward or leads the creation of the world. Great Acharyas, they have written commentaries on the Upanishads. Shankaracharyaji gives a beautiful meaning of this. He says, when the seeker's mind becomes pure like water, through sadhana, the fire of knowledge kindled by the teachings of the Guru burns away the ignorance. So when the seeker's mind becomes pure like water, so that's why purification is needed. So mind becomes pure like water through spiritual practices or sadhana. The fire of knowledge kindled by the teachings of the Guru burns away the ignorance. So that is a relationship between the water and the fire there too. And what happens from there? The Lord shines within as the self. I'm sure you have attended uh, the Bhut Shuddhi practice also, the lectures also. This is what we do in the Bhut Shuddhi also. The, all the elements, we clean them. This body is nothing but the elements. Even the mental body is nothing but the subtler parts of the elements and that can always be washed, cleansed. Fire produces with the help of that fire. We burn the ignorance and we really visualize, experience who we are. He says there's no other way to realization. There is no other way. We have seen this statement earlier also in chapter 3, verse number 8. The cause of bondage is what? Sorrow, attachments, finitude, stress. There's so many expressions. But ignorance of our infinite nature is the main cause. A person feeling sad or even a person going into depression, which term we use it so often these days. We are really, when we say we are in depression, we are loudly announcing that we are highly ignorant of our nature. A king was to enter a cave, which was pitch dark. And kings always surrounded with the servants, the helpers. They went into the cave in advance to remove the darkness. They swept, dusted, washed. They were trying to beat up the darkness. They were even cursing the darkness, but the darkness did not go away. 
there was a very wise minister. What did he do? He brought a light. That flame of light dispelled the darkness instantly. The same way the darkness of ignorance in us can only be removed by the light of knowledge of our true self. Otherwise, we are just beating ourselves up. Some people say only my God saves, or my religion liberates, or my method of breathing works. People have gotten liberated before those gods also. Religions also. Breathing techniques also. Sometimes we get stuck in a certain ideology or a practice. We got to remember that are we with our practices removing the ignorance or not? Getting rid of that darkness inside us or not. That's why the preparation is needed. Washing of the mind is needed. If it's done rightly, the realization comes through as a self-knowledge. Irrespective of the faith, irrespective of the caste or the creed or the gender or the religious practices, we got to learn to remove the darkness. That's what he is telling us in this beautiful verse. And some more elaboration on God's nature is given in the next month. Sa Vishwakrit Vishwavid Atam Yoni Gya Kal Karaha Guni Saravavidya Pradhan Kshetra Gepati Gunesha Sansar Moksha Stiti Bandhayetu. Sa means he. Vishwakrit, creator of the universe. Vishwavid, knower of the universe. Atma Yoni, self existing. Gya, Gya means omniscient. Kal Karaha, creator of time also. Kal, Guni, virtuous. Saravavid, who is all knowledge. Pradhan Kshetragyapati, the Lord of Matter and Spirit. Pradhan is the matter, Kshetragya is the Spirit. We learned this Kshetragya term in Bhagavad Gita also. Kshetra, Kshetragya, Vibhag, Yoga. You remember? 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Gunesh, controller of all the Gunas. Sansar moksha sthiti bandh hetu. Hetu is the cause. Cause of a sansar. That means transmigration. Moksha is the liberation. Sthiti is the existence. And bandh is the bondage. So cause of a transmigration, liberation. Existence and bondage. Sansar moksha sthiti bandh hetu. That truth, Paramatma, who is the creator of this entire universe, the knower of the whole universe, the source of himself. That's Atam Yoni means self-existing. Omniscient, the creator of time, the repository of all virtues and all knowledge. The Lord of all matter and spirit, the controller of all the gunas. Gunas are sattva, rajas, and tamas is the cause of sansar, liberation, existence, and bondage. So he creates all and he knows all. So vishvakrit vishvavid it means God, he is all knower. Being all, he knows all. 
There's nothing he doesn't know. He is self-created and knows all. Atam yone gya. So that means that his knowledge too is causeless. And that is his inherent nature. So he does not know all this because of something. He just knows it, causeless. See, we know things because we have studied. We have gone to the schools. We had mentors. We had parents. We know because of that. But he knows because that's his nature. He knows it all. He is the creator of time, endowed with all virtues and knows all. Kal karoho gunu guni sarva vidya. So that means he alone creates. He doesn't need anybody's help. All the knowledges, all the virtues, and also is their illuminator and the knower. So he illuminates those knowledges. We learned in Bhagavad Gita in the 15th chapter, 15th verse. Vedanta krit ved vid evcha aham. Lord Krishna is declaring there. Purushottam Yoga chapter. God is the Lord of matter and the spirit and the controller of the three qualities. Pradhan, Kshetra, Gepati, Ganesh. So he controls Satav, Rajas and Tamas which manifest in the matter and spirit. He alone controls all bodies. Pradhan and the Kshetragya that wields the bodies through the three qualities which he controls. Gunesh also means the lord of all the virtues. Gun ish, Gunesh. And what are the virtues? Beauty, memory, vitality, normally which fades away with age. Adverse circumstances or power may corrupt an honest man, but God's virtues are timeless. Always in full measure. Always totally in his control. Worldly people like us, sometimes we are in control and sometimes we lose control. But he's always in control. Sansar moks thiti band hetu. This is the last part of this beautiful mantra. He is the cause of liberation, continuation, and bondage. Because he is the very cause of worldly existence, he is naturally the cause of bondage, its continuation, and its end as well. End. His avidya maya, which we call ignorance, characterized by rajogun and tamogun, binds. And his vidya maya, which is normally known as sattvagun, liberates. Sant Tulsi Dasji says, that the one who has tied us in his sansar, he alone takes responsibility of liberating us. Joi bandhyo, soi chode. So that's why we got to learn how to surrender to him. It's almost like if a mother is wearing a mask to surprise the child. The child gets frightened, runs away to the father or somebody else, crying. The minute mother moves the mask, child will go running, embracing her. So the same mother became the cause of sorrow as well as the joy. That's why not knowing God is the cause of 
bondage. We don't know him. We just still bind ourselves in this ignorance. Knowing him, we get liberated. That's why the knowledge, the realization liberates us. So not knowing God is the cause of bondage and knowing him liberates us. That is the reason for the sadhana. We want to know him intimately, experientially. When we understand the nature of God, all our worries and fears end. Okay? So whenever we are worried, whenever we are fearful, that means we are away from this truth. We don't know God. Because some means he tanmeya of that nature. Amritaha, immortal. Ish samsatha. Who is existing as the Lord? Gya means omniscient. Sarvagaha, all pervading. Bhuvanasya of the world, asya of this. Goptaha, the protector. Ya means who, ishe rules, asya of this. Jagat of the world. Nityam, always. Ev means indeed. No means not. Anya, other. Hetu, agent or cause. Vidyate, there is Ishnaya for ruling. Indeed, he is the essential nature of the whole world. He is immortal and the ruler of the whole world. He is omniscient, all pervading, and the protector of this world. He rules over this world eternally. There's no other, there is none other who can rule over him. Okay? There is a no higher power than God. So the all capable controller, all capable. If you are sitting in a car, somebody else is driving. And if we know that this car is in the hands of a very experienced, safe and alert driver, we can sit back, enjoy the ride. We can even sleep when we want to, without any care, without any worry. This world is complex, endless. A million factors interplay simultaneously to make it what it is. No one except the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient Lord is capable of creating, sustaining, dissolving, and controlling it. Remember that. Nobody, nobody is equal to him or even close to him, let alone more than him. No finite entity can ever control or protect it. Knowing that uh, there is a totally committed, uh, which is a tanmaya, immortal, amritam, omniscient, gya, omnipotent, ish samsatha, omnipresent, sarvaga, protector of the world, bhuvanasya gopata, who is always in command. Always. Uh, we should give up all worry. And 
remember that all of this is in his hands learn to live joyfully happily he is in control nobody else this is what this mantra is telling us one sufi saint said that countless kings have come and gone governments have changed but the rule and power of my lord can never change he rules unchallenged and can never be displaced history shows instances of people who thought they could rule over and the entire earth like napoleon hitler or from hindu scriptures some of the kings they thought that they are controller of the three worlds like ravan hiranyakashyap but they have become the dust of the same earth they claimed to conquer mother earth laughs at their foolishness born from dust they go back to dust the rule control and protection of the lord alone are eternal remember that any time we comes fear comes in your mind take the shelter at the feet of god with this knowledge that's why knowledge when we practice it it puts us at a very peaceful state of mind any time mind is agitated that means we do not have a full surrender at the feet of lord very powerful verses this rishi has written very powerful having realized that god alone can liberate us from bondage the seeker now seeks refuge in him that's what we see in verse number 18 य ब्राह्मणम विधाति पूर्वम य वे वेदान च परिनोति तस्मे कामह देवम आत्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम मुमुक्षु व शरणम अहम प्रपद्य य मिन्स हु ब्राह्मणम इट्स लाइक अ ब्रह्म ब्रह्मा ब्राह्मणम द क्रिएटर विधाति क्रिएट्स पूर्वम इन द बिगिनिंग that means in the beginning of the creation before it just became manifested here means who where means indeed vedan the vedas cha means and prahinoti reveals tasmay to him tamah in that very devam god atam buddhi prakasham who illumines the intellect buddhi is the intellect mumukshu seeker of liberation we means indeed sharnam refuge aham ai parpadye seek the lord who manifested the creation in the beginning who gave him the vedas who illumines my intellect in him do i who seek ultimate liberation take refuge in him so what he is saying that god is the first guru vedanta prahinoti the seeker has clearly understood that god alone liberates we saw that in the verse number 16 today and also that knowledge alone liberates that was in verse number 15 now he is connecting these two verses in this verse god in his absolute nature is a pure existence consciousness bliss with no time space and mind or instrument to teach the knowledge he manifests as the total mind hiranyakar the lord brahma the creator of the world 
he also bestows Lord Brahma with all knowledge. So when we say he over here, that is Brahma, the absolute. Brahma is the one who bestows knowledge to Brahma. He says to create. And he is the one who gives the power to sustain the world. Especially the knowledge of the Vedas, its essence being self-knowledge. So Lord Brahma, after that, taught this knowledge to sincere seekers. So Lord Brahma got the knowledge from Brahma himself. Lord Brahma taught this knowledge to sincere seekers and started the exalted lineage of self-knowledge. That's why in Yoga Sutras, we read the same thing. God is the gurus of the gurus of the gurus. All the knowledge comes from God himself. Munda Kupanishad traces its origin to Lord Brahma who gave self-knowledge to his great son, Atharva. Self-knowledge as revealed in Kevalya Upanishad was given by Lord Brahma to his well-qualified disciple, Ashwalayan. Because this creation is not a linear creation. It has happened again and again and again. So there are so many different examples. But this fact does not change. This thought is picturized beautifully with Lord Vishnu sleeping on the thousand-headed serpent in the milky ocean. God in his absolute nature. We all know from our study of these pranas, a lotus emerges from his navel and Lord Brahma with the four heads facing four directions is seen sitting with the Vedas in his hands. That's why Vedas are called the eternal. They were not written by somebody. Vedas are eternal knowledge. God's knowledge. Every disciple can trace his knowledge, lineage back to God. Atam buddhi prakasham, God the illuminator of self-knowledge. God not only enlightened Lord Brahma with self-knowledge, but all gurus, disciples who realize, people who teach, or people who seek the knowledge are also enlightened by God alone. No guru can say that I am enlightening my students. So God himself who does it. The seekers resolve to meditate. They withdraw their mind from the world, from the objects, and they learn to direct their mind towards God. And with sincere practice, uh, seekers, uh, they finally realize, I am the infinite self. This knowledge that liberates and all the previous efforts happen in the awareness of God. In India, it's a general understanding that wherever the flow of the river turns towards its source, that place is considered holy. And a dip in that river, in that place, purifies us. So the flow of thoughts, uh, when turned Godwards, uh, are indeed purifying. So when we just take a dip in the water, that is just only symbolic purification. The real purification is when our thoughts turn towards God. Whether during prayers, or whether during studies, or whether during meditation, or whether doing some seva. Any which way our thoughts, if they can turn towards God world, we are purifying them. Whenever we feel happy, we attribute to an external source. Most of us do that. Sometimes good music or good food or good company. But actually, the peace and joy 
experienced is because of the thoughts. Because in that brief moment, your thoughts have entered inward. And God is the illuminator of all our thoughts and he alone graces our happiness or bliss or enlightenment. Mumukshu ve sharnam aham prapadye, the true seekers surrender. It is very rare to find a true seeker and very difficult to truly surrender. Truly surrender. Mumukshu is one who desires to liberate himself from the cycle of birth and death. All joys and sorrows of worldly existence all finitude, here and now. Some may claim to seek liberation, but do not wish to give up their worldly possessions, petty attachments, or even their favorite music. That's why Ashtvakra says that it is strange that on the one hand, a person desires liberation and yet is scared of giving up anything. We want to have both. It is only by the grace of God that one has the desire for the non-dual truth. One who sees the limitations of all worldly pleasures and possessions and want to free himself of all the finitude will become a true mumukshu, seeker of liberation. Otherwise, we are just hanging in there. Sometimes we want it, sometimes we don't. Or even if we want it, part of our mind still is attached to the worldly existence. We just give our own justification for it. If he can become like Nachiketa, nothing tempted him. Nothing. He was only the age of eight years old. He was a sincere seeker from his goal of self-realization. Surrender comes when we feel helpless and understand our limitations. I am limited in my abilities and efforts. And when a seeker says, you are all capable and compassionate, I surrender to you. I take refuge in you. Please guide me, help me to go beyond Maya. That is surrender. That is surrender. Surrender to the Lord with attributes means to give up our personal will, wish, and live according to God's will. That means it's not that you start stop living. Or stop doing your duties, but whatever you are doing, you are doing for the happiness of God. What does it mean to surrender to the attributeless God? We'll look at that next week with verse number 19 when he says, Nishkalam, Nishkriyam, Shantam, Nirvadhyam, Niranjanam, Amritasya Param Setum, Dagdedanam. Again, beautiful verse, but we'll have to stop it here today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vasheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.